Why, hello there, young heathens. I am Mr. Pastor of a random church you'll never know the name of. My church is just one of the many churches that popped up during the 19th century as the Second Great Awakening ravaged the land. Many a church sprung up in response, but a few of them were... Oh, how do you say? Special. They were unique in many ways, whether it was because of their latter success, their fancy chairs, or their fervent dancing. So, my dears, let me guide you through the wonderful little history I like to call... The Cults of the 19th Century! In 1832, Andrew Jackson successfully defeated Henry Clay to become president, but according to others, much more powerful forces were working to end the world. Why, hello there, my children. My name is William Miller. I was, as some said, a rather strange child. My family was extremely religious, and yet, still, I felt out of place. I could not believe everything the pastors were telling me about the world, for it seemed filled with terror and suffering. Then, it hit me. I knew that the Bible could tell me when the world would end all of this suffering. The Bible could foretell the exact date of the second coming of Christ. I rearranged the verses of the Bible until I found the exact date when he would return. 1843. Considering it was 1831, I felt that the world had little time to prepare, and urged my followers to begin right away. I told my devoted followers that the world would end sometime between March 21st, 1843, and March 21st, 1844. Newspapers like the Signs of the Times, the Midnight Cry, and the Philadelphia alarm spread my message. Yet, it seems it was all for naught. We gathered on March 21st, and nothing happened. So, I changed the date. I told everyone to leave and come back on April 3rd. They did. But nothing happened. So I retracted that statement and said it would be April 18th. Nothing happened. I thought long and hard, and I finally, I said that it would be October 22nd. This electrified my followers. He started giving out their belongings, paying off their debts. After all, when we would be saved by Jesus, we would need no material possessions. However, y'all heathens are clearly still alive and well today. Thus, the world didn't end, and I was ashamedly wrong. Here are his cult's rankings. He receives three ascension robes out of ten on the awesomeness scale. When people stopped working because they thought the world was going to end, it ended up wreaking havoc on the tiny villages of America. However, because they were so adamant that we were all going to die, they get a weirdness rating of 9 flying redemption Jesuses out of 10. Around the same time as the Millerites were freaking out about the end of the world, a man named Joseph Smith crept up onto the scene. The 1820s were a time of great communication and transformation. Some might reference the completion of the Erie Canal in 1825 to support that idea. Others would cite Joseph Smith and the creation of Mormonism. I'm going to pass this over to him now. In the spring of 1820, I went to a grove of trees near my home and knelt in prayer. 
I saw a pillar of light exactly above my head, above the brightness of the sun, which descended gradually until it fell upon me. When the light rested upon me, I saw two personages whose brightness and glory defy all description, standing above me in the air. One of them spake unto me, calling me by name, and said, pointing to the other, This is my beloved son. Hear him! I was led by God to an ancient record and given the ability to translate it into English. This golden record is the Book of Mormon. God told me that he wants his children to grow in knowledge, development, and talents, and gifts, and to fill and fulfill the missions and callings that were conferred on us, exercise free agency without memory of the pre-mortal life, and establish the foundations of eternal family relationships. After all, when you marry Mormonism, you marry forever. After you die, we believe that you're judged in the spirit world. There are three levels. The Telestial Kingdom, which is for those who commit serious crimes and reject Christ. This is ruled over by the Holy Spirit. Then there is... The Terrestrial Kingdom, who are people who've lived honorable lives but didn't believe in Christ. This is ruled over by Jesus. Finally, there is the Celestial Kingdom, which is where Mormons go. God himself reigns over this part. We are able to bask in the glory of both the Heavenly Spirit and Jesus, whereas those stuck in the Terrestrial Kingdom are only able to feel the glory of Jesus. Instead of our usual grading system, we are going to propose another disclaimer. The definition of a cult is a small religious group that is not ex part of a larger and more accepted religion and that has beliefs regarded by many people as extreme or dangerous. During the early years of Mormonism, they were a very small religious group. Their views were also seen as extreme enough to chase them into Ohio. However, according to modern standards, Mormonism is no longer a cult as its views have been more widely accepted and it currently has millions of followers worldwide. Every religion, including Christianity, Islam, and Buddhism, were once small cults that eventually grew to what they are today. There is no shame in using the word cult when its use is historically accurate. Now, we'll move on to the Oneida community. You see, during the 1840s, the Gothic era of fashion was in, and the Lego mutton sleeves were out. Similarly, those in the Oneida community thought that the apocalyptic worlds were out, you know, the ones the Millers believe in, and post-apocalyptic worlds were totally in! Thus, John Humphrey Noyes started a cult in which they believed that the second coming of Christ had already occurred. Hello, I am the leader of the Oneida community, John Humphrey Noyes. Also, I have several wives! Oh, yeah, that. Yes, see, there's this wonderful idea I had called complex wives, or complex marriages, sorry. Instead of those silly one man, one woman marriages, everyone is married to everyone else! This way, nobody gets jealous. We also said that men were equal to women, so our girls cut their hair short and wore pantaloons. They worked out in the fields right alongside us men. Sadly, everybody hated me and my people for these ideas, so they kicked us out of town in 1847. We moved to Oneida, and over the next 30 years flourished. See, if a woman had a child, they would raise the child on their own until the kid could walk. Then the child was placed in a common nursery. To keep everyone in line, we held criticism cures. We shamed the wrongdoing out of the community, embarrassing them until they couldn't even think about sinning in such a way. That seems nerve-wracking. It was! But it worked, and that's all that matters. They called us perfectionists, and Bible communists later on, but I'm pretty sure they were just jelly on how perfect we were. <sighs> on account of their awesomeness, they rate two pantalooned women out of ten. Everybody knows the Quakers. They were super nice people who were all constructive up in Pennsylvania. Great people! However, a cult of them branched off into the United Society of Believers in Christ's Second appearing during the late 18th century. In 1747, they settled in America and focused on communities based off celibacy and agrarian communal living. Hello, I am Ann Lee, or as my followers called me, Mother Ann Lee. My followers and I believe that God was both a male and a female simultaneously. We also believe that I was God. 
showing up to warn us all about how to live our lives, I'd show up in another form to end the world. They thought that each person could have a personal relationship with God, just like their Quaker friends. They also believed that both men and women could find and give voice to the inner light, which was expressed through songs, hymns, and dancing. That's why they called us the Shakers! Besides being known for our awesome dance skills, we made quite nice furniture and architecture. We also made black people and women total equals. On a scale from 1 to 10, 1 being completely normal and 10 being something is seriously wrong with you, the Shakers receive a 4 for oddness. Besides believing that Christ would come again through their founder and the usual cult oddities, the Shakers were good people who didn't do anything out of normal cult business. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being restrictive arms length prom dancing and 10 being Brazilian samba, the Shakers receive a 10 for awesomeness. Dancing, singing, opposing slavery, and total equality for women are pretty cool things. Who wouldn't like that? Actually, the English government wasn't too fond of it. They jailed me when they first found out about my beliefs for claiming to be a prophet in that whole I'm God thing. Said I was spreading disruption and religious fervor. The fools! Well, you definitely showed them. Your cult highly influenced the economy in your area because you became famous for your furniture and later on your silverware. It's so popular that your company still exists in 2015. The telegraph was invented in 1856, driving forward communication across the nation. The National League for Baseball was formed in 1876. The world seemed to just be getting more interesting and more intelligent. However, in 1879, a strange cult seemed to push America backwards in history, rather than forwards. <laughs> Idiot! We made the nation better! It's all of you fools who continuously poison your people with those vaccines, antibiotics, and <laughs> doctors! See what I mean? That was Mary Baker Eddy, founder and prophet of the Christian Scientist. They were a group that dangerously believed in the power of God over the power of medicine. Sick kid? Read the Bible. Pneumonia? Read the Bible. They preached that illness was an illusion that could be corrected by prayer alone. Thus, if one felt ill in any way, they should use the Bible to purge away their illusion of illness. I'm so glad you agree. It's very true, you know. In 1875, I published the book Science and Health which taught people about the illusion of illness. Yeah, well, you also caused people to die because they wouldn't go get medical care. You embarked on an aggressive, multifaceted marketing program designed to make Christian science mainstream and attract new members. You even claim to support women's issues just to suck in new members. People compare you to that recently started group called Scientology. What's that? A group with the same brand of logic as you. Oh, they must be just wonderful! <sighs> just leave. They're insane, so for their weirdness ranking, they get 10 infected wounds out of 10. For their awesomeness, they get negative 1,000 dead ill kids out of 10. They're horrible and cause many parents to subject themselves, their families, and their innocent children to undo pain and death. Just because Mary there did like science. By the end of the 19th century, the Chinese were fighting for their independence, whilst people like Mary Baker Eddy were actually killing those who already had it. As you have seen, many strange cults popped up during the 19th century. Some were harmful to society and caused unneeded pain and suffering. Others preached new ideas of tolerance and kindness. They provided a platform for the improvement of society, far before society was ready for such advancements. I am Mr. Pastor. And thank you, heathens, for watching. Cults of the 19th Century!